Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Let's jump right into it. Uh, market conditions still remaining bullish in this bull market. We actually have popped up to that 23 number here. We've been sitting around that 22 number. That is this line on this chart, this trend momentum. And pardon me. And when this represents over on this side of the axis, this is, there's a zero line. And when that cross, that trend crosses up above zero, then we get this green line here. So essentially this entire move has been uptrend and then we're seeing kind of the magnitude or the, the depth, the length of the trend relative to this non-trending or downtrending location. So we're a long ways away now from where we, where we essentially crossed over and we know that and we've been there for a while. The issue is now just what do we do? What do we do from here? And so we'll spend some time uh, today continuing to talk about that as well as some of the opportunities and risks that are out there right now. <coughs> Pardon me, let me grab a drink real quick. <clears throat> Try and get a hold of myself here. Uh, we're seeing breadth still. One of the things to be paying attention to when markets get a little bit tired is we start to see breadth start to slow down. Breadth is, is basically just the participation in the trend. How many stocks are involved in the current trend or how many stocks are involved in at all? And so in this case, we have this breadth number. When we're up in this upper range, that means 80%, essentially 80% of the market or all participants are in uptrends. And when we see these numbers right here, 50, these are these are representative of the Traders Pro database. So when they are in uptrends or downtrends, it's 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 uh, similar to the uh, buy sell ratio, so just a little bit different. But one of the things that we're seeing here is we're seeing um, divergence. Divergence is when you have one thing go doing one going one direction and another going another direction. So in this case, we have breadth moving lower, and we have uh, the market still moving higher. And that's okay, that can still happen, but we just know that at some point, uh, or the stronger trends are going to have larger participation in that trend. One of the things I pointed out this morning was on the on the indexes tab, you have the Dow Jones Industrials, the NASDAQ 100, which essentially are you know 130 stocks of the, the biggest, best companies on this planet. Well, look at, uh, look at the buy-sell ratio here. It's almost two to one where everything else is is getting pummeled. So there's only about 150 stocks that are holding up the entire market right now. And you know, maybe a little bit more, maybe this number over here, you're gonna you still still are getting some strength, but by and large, that tells us really what is happening in the market as far as the participation. And it's just not that much. There's just, I think we're getting a final push here of all of the big players. And I think a lot of the asset managers are concentrating funds into those players as well. At least that's, that. you know, we're, we have to kind of read between the lines and that may be completely wrong, but we know that for whatever reason, this group of stocks is getting all the attention right now. That could mean that all the other small stuff is just crap and they're, you know, and all of the, the these companies may start to struggle or, we, we want to start thinking a little bit that direction at this point in the market in terms of where we're at in this trend. And I'll, I'll keep mentioning that because we want to we want to kind of position ourselves when things are feeling good, not necessarily when things are bad. And that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, we're high, let's just sell because we could be high up here for a long, long time, years. In fact, we may retrace and bounce and move higher all within this upper range. So it's entirely possible that we have much much more upside it just may happen slower and we, we may get some sideways chop we may get a retracement it may take the rest of the year we may rally higher it, it, there's a lot of things that could happen from this point on so then we want to switch down a little bit more to the shorter term trend these shorter term indicators are going to help us decide <clears throat> what's happening in the shorter term buy sell ratio is going to give us a representation of all the stocks in the database. And we can see it's lopsided. We can see it's lopsided to the bearish stance. We've got a buy-sell ratio of 0.38. So the market as a whole is quite weak 
even though we're seeing pr prices trending slightly higher. We did see, I think we're down a little bit today. Let's look at S&P 500. Now it's relatively flat right here. It's looking you know, like it has a consolidation phase. We had this breakout and a real nice run up and you can see now one, two, three, four days where it's holding right at the support area, which is also right at the top of this price activity. So when we're looking at price activity, we always wanna look at where are the support and resistance levels. Remember those can also be referred to as supply demand zones, but in, in essence, it means that when, when, when there are people that are, are willing to sell and then the table flips, that selling becomes, selling at this location becomes buying at this location, these sellers either have to be out or they have to they have to flip their approach and flip back to bullish because now this is the support zone side of things. So in the very short term, we're sitting right at some decent support. It really this is that coiled spring. You know, it, it feels like once we get that big move and then a tight consolidation that the continuation pattern wants to go higher. That would be my bet and still is my bet at, at this point. Now the issue the issue that we run into is how you know how how much do we want to participate how big should our should our investments be our position sizes so part of that is a part of this process that when we're up towards the upper end of the range we obviously know we're at the upper end of the range the probability of it, of us going significantly higher it's there we could get an exuberant move but the probabilities are a little bit less and, and a little bit higher that we slow down a little bit or we chop sideways uh, for a length of time right here and so we want to just be aware of our position size i went in actually uh, yesterday i did a little bit of housekeeping in this portfolio and uh, and removed about six positions that had not been in they just really hadn't been doing a whole lot and they they were moving higher they hadn't broken to the upside or we hadn't been stopped out so we just sold some of those out and you can see that let me go back through here and see if we can find just this last few days. So the ones that I that I removed, we had one UEC which was down 13%, one that was down one, one down three, one down seven, one down five, one down nine. So when we're, you know, for the most part, when we're when we're removing stocks that haven't moved, this is about what we get. Maybe a small gain, maybe a small loss, but it hadn't moved. And so we wanted to we number one, we wanted to free up all of that capital. Okay, this is two four, six, eight, 10, twelve thousand dollars now put put back into cash. okay so it's raising the cash le levels. it's trimming, you know it's it's doing the, the trimming you know weeding the garden, it's getting rid of some stuff that isn't quite working but also could uh, move lower, hadn't been stopped out yet, but it's just removing the risk. And there's always, you know there, the thing about most most decisions is there's always a decision. There's one choice or there's another choice. And when it comes to selling or buying a stock, that, then we can either do one thing or the other, right? So we have to be okay with what that decision is because inevitably we'll sell something or get stopped out of something and it immediately rockets higher. Or just, you know, just as often we get stopped out of something and it completely falls off the table and continues to drop even lower so we want to we want to be in control of what we can control and we talk about this a lot we talk about the the control is our risk now if you look at this and we had you know that's not so call that 10 13 18 uh, 25 30 okay so about 30 percent in those and then we make that back in one trade so that's why when we're dealing with losses the losses we always want to have really small losses so that we can and then we're going to let the winners take care of that take care of the um the gains the bigger gains we want to be bit when we're right we want to be right big we want to have some of these big returns and so this is just a part of that choppiness we're not going to be right very often okay? half the time if that, but when we are right, we're gonna be right big. And so those profits are going to be, our biggest profits you can see are in the hundreds of percent, while our biggest losses, they shouldn't be this high. This one was a, this one gapped lower on horrendous earnings and is almost bankrupt now anyway. So we're, you know, you take a stop and it gap, a gap can sometimes create a scenario that 
hurts us. But in this case, the vast majority, in fact, I did some calculations, it's the, the average is 9% uh, on the losses, while the average winner is 45%. So that's creating that boost, even though um, there are some losses. So don't be afraid to just to, to, to sell things because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not working for us. And so, and trim from the bottom up, trim from your losers first. So as you're looking at your portfolio and you're looking at your holdings and you sort it and you say, okay, I'm down a few on these. If I wanted to get rid of positions, I'm gonna start with these down here. I'm gonna start with my losers, why? because they're not working. What is working? Working is going higher. If it's not going higher and it doesn't happen relatively soon within three, four, five days, um, a week or two absolutely tops, then cut it, get rid of it. It's not working. Move on to something else. There, there, are, there is going to be something else that comes up. You go to your, to your muscle stock scan, you pull in your new buy, and there you go. There's a whole, there's a whole list of stocks that are better than the ones and we we never know which one so we've got to continually be taking attempts at some of those names um that is so that is the when you're reducing your exposure then that's the start with the start with the losers okay if you're going to just say I'm, I'm just trimming i'm raising cash start with what's not working sell all the losers out or however many you're needing or some Hey, I, I would just suggest if you're going to do it, do it. Just sell the losers. On the upside, though, when we're when we're talking about reducing position sizes, we don't want to trim the entire winner. We want to sell part of it, and so we can sell on the way up, as we typically will, at a certain percentage increase, or as the portfolio, uh, as the holding size is getting a little bit larger, then we can do that as well. But in this case, you could you could say, I'm, I really want to raise a lot of cash and I sold all my losers already. Now what? Now what do I do? Well, you can keep working your way up from these. Some of these are, you know, we just barely bought the, a couple of these within the last few days. And so as it's going higher, you can also then say, well, my winners now, I want to capitalize or realize some of the gains here. You can also sell a number of shares. So as you're going higher, things are increasing. The, the gains are there. You can whittle away at some of the number of shares. So really those are the first two spots, selling into your, selling your losers and then selling a portion of the winners to reduce cash or to, to increase cash and reduce overall exposure. Okay, uh, And I'm comfortable with this level right now. You might be comfortable with a different level. You might be comfortable with a whole lot less. You might be comfortable with a whole lot more positions. The lever that we're pulling is the number of of holdings okay and so the we're, we're not doing a whole lot of things different other than we're saying this hasn't been stopped out and it also hasn't moved i want to to get rid of it i want to move that money back to cash because we were getting up to about you know 27 28 holdings that 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 that's typically what we're doing in real good strong markets and we are in a pretty good strong market but they're but the breadth is not there and we're at the upper end of the range so the things that the thing i can control is how many holdings do i have i can't control what the market does if it goes any higher or any lower i can't control what the stocks do I, all i can control is how i'm entering and how i'm managing each of these individual positions and that's all you have control over as well so we want to just be you know so really get get good and really fine tune on what we have control over and Try and maximize the opportunities that we have. Um, that's soapbox number one. I, and continuing to talk about where we're at right here. Let, let me actually jump over a couple of things that were interesting. I wanted to point out in addition to these ratios and in addition to, um, well, it was the commodities. So sectors, we didn't talk about that. Not a whole lot of change here. This is also a good representation of what our buy-sell ratio looks like. Okay, and uh, it's kind of a sloppy mess right here because we've got industries all over the place right now. We don't have a real unified uptrend across the board on sectors. So we know that from here, we know buy-sell ratio is also bearish. We, all, we also know that we're, uh, we're dealing with uh, bond, bonds and interest rates and inflation. And there's just a lot of talking points and things that are happening and really, the only real big thing right now is AI and productivity and how that's happening and if that's happening. And uh, we're continuing to see some, uh, you know, really some cool developments that are happening there. Let's uh, jump in and talk about commodities because those are also um, in, 
you know, in um, in the news or in, things to be aware of at least because USO, USO is oil. We talked about this retracement running back up into this resistance area now. It kind of, yesterday was a 3% move. It's just kind of pausing right here, but oil may be reversing. Remember I mentioned last time, it might've been this morning that we have this uptrend and when things start to retrace, in this case, the, this Fibonacci tool on our six month time frame is also telling us the current trend direction. Okay? The current trend direction is still up. Why? Because it's still grabbing those points on this time frame. If it were in a downtrend, then this would be the high and the low would be over here and it would be, be connecting this direction and our fib lines would be drawn this way. So right now, oil is saying our corrective zone is here, 3828218, meaning this Fibonacci number, this 38.2% level and this 61.8% range, those are just retracement levels of this counter trend. So it's if I were to draw back, if I were to draw a line and say we were going to we went up and now we're coming back 50%, halfway. We're coming back halfway of the trend. Well, there's my number, okay? It's connected, it's telling me that's halfway. 61.8 or 62% is a Fibonacci retracement uh, um, ratio. It's also referred to as the golden ratio. It's a really fascinating ratio. If you were to go out and Google the golden ratio, you're gonna, you're gonna get sucked into some really cool stuff. Uh, and so if you don't have any time after this, I suggest uh, doing it. Basically what it does is it, it's a proportional relationship and you find these proportional relationships with this 62% per, uh, ratio a lot. It's, it happens in a lot of different areas. So it often acts as a very, very significant uh, zone, reversal zone in stock trading. One of the reasons why also is because that last leg lower flushes out the remaining sellers so there's nobody left to sell so you get a massive supply demand shift happening around these ratios as well not always but you're but you're going to get an attempt uh, around these ranges in the 618 zone you're starting to see that now what do i mean by a supply demand shift well you think about what's happening you have sellers 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 there's not an an indefinite number of sellers there's, they're going to run out at some point there's not there's nobody left to sell no one's interested in selling well what does that do okay that removes all of the supply if nobody wants to sell and there are people that might want to buy well what is that what is that called that's called demand okay so people that want to buy there's demand for that and those people start to come in and it starts to move the prices higher why because there's nobody left to sell now it's a demand shift there's nobody left to sell now these people that sold are thinking damn i got to get back in and so you get now maybe you get short covering if they did short they should, now they're covering their shorts they have to buy it back to close the position or they're like man i was wrong i'm gonna bail i'm gonna jump back into this bullish trend so oftentimes buying creates more buying and, it's, and the last part of that selling can oftentimes shake out the sellers or, or people will set up new short sales and then they jump back in and it can create that demand. So that's, you know, that's kind of the, it's, and it's also, it's really nice just to look at it and say, yeah, that's a demand, that's a support zone, demand zone, but understanding a little bit what's happening with the supply demand, the number of buyers and sellers, what happens up here? Okay, when you have a stock that's gone straight up, and it's going higher and higher and higher, buying, 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 buying. Well, who's left to buy? There's nobody left to buy it now at the top. So it doesn't just magically go higher. There has to be demand, but there's not. The buyers are done. Everybody that's bought has bought and there's nobody left to buy. Well, now what? Who's left? Sellers. Okay, so then that creates a rollover. That creates a supply zone. So the supply zones, the demand zones. When there's too many sell, when there's more sellers than buyers, when there's more buyers than sellers, those locations are happening all the time and, and at every location. And they're happening, you know, they're happening in ranges as well. They're happening at these lines. Every one of these lines that we have are going to be some kind of action zone. It's going to be a resistance area. So now you're getting supply, right? You're getting rallied up. Now you're getting people that are buying. There's no but there's nobody left to buy because they don't trust this area. Now, now they're selling, now selling creates a supply zone. Okay, so the supply and demand zones 
are happening at different locations. And that's the rationale is that they're just, it's not gonna go up forever. The, the buyers are done. Now the sellers may be done or are they? That's the question. We're kind of, it's kind of why we have the yellows. The yellows give us those ranges of what's happening. Are we shifting trends or not? We're still kind of, the, the jury's still out. We're, we've been in a downtrend, but we're working our way back up. Is it a new uptrend or not? Time, uh, time will tell. And when, when it does tell, it's gonna look something like, Let's see if we can find an example in some of these new buy lists um, today. Oops, let's see, let me go to here and here. I wanted to see if I can find uh, a little bit, kind of like this. So here's, a, here's an example of a, of a downtrend. It's shifting trends right here. Now, who's to say that it could, have, could or couldn't have continued to drop? Okay, that's why we're looking for these ranges. These red, it's is it's a it's a downtrend. Yes, it's in an uptrend still, but if in terms of a trade, we would have been stopped out or we would have exited. We don't want to wait around and see if it's going to drop further. But we do want to wait around and see on the sideline in cash, and we want to wait for this again. Okay, that's our confirmation that okay, this was a correction, counter trend, retracement, whatever. We're not in that, now we're revisiting again. That's that's why it's, it's kind of just picking up where it left off. We don't want to we don't want to participate here while it's going down. We kind of want to jump from here over to here. And that really is the goal of, of this methodology is avoiding the downtrends as much as possible and only staying in and playing when we're in that upper demand zone, that, that upper uh, momentum zone there as well so that's so with oil we're you know where oil we might be i don't know right around here and it could very easily still find some resistance and then have a downtrend so we want a, enough confirmation that the momentum shifted back to the upside so as you're watching your charts and you're scrolling through and you're saying starting to see these uh, patterns and you're seeing some of these things that are weakening and then I'm just gonna scroll through for a minute see if I can find any more examples Th these are some more examples here as well Okay, these are, and these are examples of a little bit of whipsaw action, especially in a strong bull market. Strong bull markets often will get this, and that is where the trend almost shifts. It almost wants to move lower, but then it doesn't, and it starts to come back again, and we get the confirmation. If I'm, if I'm convinced that the market or this stock is going to fall, and I think, and I've been listening to this or that or reading this or that, and I am just 100% convinced that it's going to drop, and so I'm not going to sell uh, or I'm going to, to short the stock or, or uh, whatever the case may be, I'm go I believe that it's going lower. Well, at what point do I have to shift my belief? Okay, as traders, we don't want to get married to any position. It, it is what it is. All, all stocks are bad. All stocks are dangerous. All, all stocks can lose money, okay? All stocks, can make money and all stocks can improve improve as well. But it, just because you have a stock that is good right now doesn't mean that it can't be one that can completely obliterate your portfolio in the future. Okay, so just the thought of something being good is not good enough. We want it to prove it to us. It has to prove it to us in price. And the proof is in essentially in the color. We only want to focus on in this in this case the greens and the and the yellows as it's starting to continue its overall trend higher. Okay, let me just uh, let me just um, sum up here. And Thursday, I'm going to talk about uh, one of the screens, one of the ways I've set up a oops, set up a screen, a couple other screens that you can utilize as well, or at least watch these. If you're looking for stocks, you know, obviously the the scans are a fast way to go, but if you want to refine that just a little bit more, one thing you can do is, is create a scan that has no signal on it. It just has a, a, other criteria. And it's got, in this case, I've got $10. I've got a market cap of 100 million, which is really small. Okay, we could go a lot higher and average uh, volume minimum of 500,000 shares. And then the ROE, any of these fundamentals, ROE, annual EPS, last quarter EPS, sales growth are all minimum of one. So they at least have um, a positive number here and the ranks are higher than 90. 
Okay, so that's pulling in 37 stocks right now, and it's pulling in all of them because I I don't have any signal chosen. It's either it's just everything. So you're going to see some of these stocks that have some hold signals, some buy signals, but they have all the criteria that I want. Okay, and that these may be other things as well. Maybe you want a really high number right here. Whatever the case may be, I, if I want uh, just quality numbers sitting here, then now I've got a good group to choose from. And I could quickly glance over and say, all right, I know that I've got high ranks here. Some of these stocks have retraced. I just saw one, Vital Farms right here. This is an egg farmer. And they had a really nasty sell-off yesterday, but then rally back up again, pretty big volume. We've experienced some of those in some of those trades when you get one that just goes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Once the selling starts, it, it can it can happen pretty quickly. But you can see how much support it actually found right here. And it may be a stock that I'm like, oh, okay, I've been wanting an opportunity to get into this thing. Uh, and so now I'm just gonna wait. Okay, now I'm gonna wait for it to see if it'll retrace. And so I can go into that list and I can see some of these other stocks that are that are not quite there yet. Okay, they're they're in downtrends, but they're good, solid. Everything else is everything else is good. They're just not in that uptrend. Okay, so we still want to wait. Even like EDU, this thing has been, this stock has been a really high flyer for the last couple of years. But you can see it's really starting to waffle right here, and it is uh, a couple of false signals. So, so is it going to ultimately work its way back up again, or is this leader now starting to reverse and start to head lower? We can start to watch that as it's happening uh, if we were to set up a scan that has all of the signals included in that as well. And it's, um, you know, it's a fun list to be able to go through because we're seeing, you know, you're starting to see toll, uh, some of these home builders, toll brothers, uh, some of the big leaders that had this big run up are, they're slowing down and they're slowing down significantly. So we, we also want to see that as we talked about the big winners are slowing. We all, we know the, we know the laggards, we know the small cap and crap stocks are, are they're, they're already in downtrends. But if we get these real good quality names, these these high ranking stocks that start to roll over and can't quite get the, uh, the, the move higher, the, that's gonna tell us a little bit more about the market, okay? This is, a, Toll Brothers also tells us a little bit more about the, the interest rates because they are a home builder and it's gonna be very interest rate sensitive based on mortgage rates. So they may be pausing here just a little bit as some of the Fed numbers and interest rates are um, uh, are 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 still in play here a little bit going forward for the next few days and weeks. I'm going to end on that note. I appreciate everyone's time and effort, and um, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye now.